Hi everyone, welcome back to Technical Tuesdays. This week we're gonna dive into Fantastic a little bit uh, just to show you what that software looks like and how to use it to run single and multi-point blower door tests on all different kinds of buildings. People use this software to generate reports to test residential properties, commercial properties, industrial, all types of buildings can be tested uh, and have reports generated for various different types of standards. So this week we're gonna do just a quick semi-automatic test, we'll get into what that means, and then uh, how to generate a report, and how to test to various pressures that you wanna take uh, for a multi-point test, or you can use the same process just to take one point for a single point test. So this is fantastic. Uh, once you open up the software and select the standard that you wanna test to, this is the window that you get. So we're gonna run uh, just a quick blower door test using ASTM E779 with the DM32 uh, and this Model 5000 fan behind me. Uh, so the next uh, dropdown that we wanna look at here, uh, once we make sure that we're testing to the right standard that we wanna test to, uh, is equipment. And this is where we see all of our gauges uh, that show up that are communicating with the software with the appropriate fans that they are connected to. So here we see uh, my DM32 gauge. We're just, we just have one gauge selected here and then the model 5000 fan uh, that it's operating. Um, we can also enter some extra information here. So if we wanna put a location such as front door, we can do so. If we wanna assign a specific reference number to the test uh, for our internal references or whatever, we can do that as well. Um, if we're connected to the internet, we can, uh, we can pull up calibration information uh, about the gauge and the fan if we have the serial numbers uh, input correctly. So uh, we can populate the, and pull those certificates as well if we have a building official or someone that wants to see that information. Uh, we can do that also. Uh, the next drop down is the building and customer details. So this is where we put in that basic information about where the building is located, the address, any details or notes that we want to put in about the project. And then uh, this is where we would put in information about the building, uh, the elevation, how large it is, uh, the area, we can put that in also, uh, and then the enclosure uh, square footage so that uh, if we wanna get uh, the CFM per square foot of envelope area, uh, that way the software can pull that information and pull those results for us at the end of the test. So the, the next drop down we see here is the pressurization set. So this is where our data is gonna be uh, collected and logged as we uh, collect our baseline and then uh, our different uh, points that we wanna run and then our end baseline and then we can calculate the results here as well. There's a few different ways that we can collect data here. Uh, the two most popular methods are uh, an automatic test or an auto test and then a semi-auto test. What we're gonna do today is a semi-auto test. We'll do an auto test next week. Um, the difference is with semi-auto, that's when we tell the software uh, what we wanna collect point by point. So for an auto test, we tell it how many points that we wanna collect ahead of time uh, and between what pressures. So for example, we could say, hey, I wanna collect eight points uh, between zero and 80 pascals. But we'll look into more of that next week. Um, one thing that we wanna do uh, before we start collecting data is to make sure that we have the correct inputs in there. So that's where we would go to settings and then advanced. It's really not an advanced setting. It's uh, actually pretty critical. This is where we would uh, select whether if we do common control or individual control. For more information on that, check out last week's episode uh, on that topic. Uh, but for just one fan today, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if we were doing a whole building test, common, or if we were doing multiple zones at once, then individual. And this is where we also uh, select uh, what units that we wanna collect in. So is it imperial or metric? Uh, just some basic stuff like that. And then under the settings tab, uh, this is where we put in our reference pressure. So today we're gonna do a residential test. So our uh, reference pressure is gonna be 50 pascals. If we were doing a commercial test, we would change that to 75. Uh, and then this is where you put in all your inputs for an auto test too. We'll do that next week. But for now, our reference pressures look good, so I'm happy with this, so I'll select OK. So some other things we wanna look at too uh, is just how we're set up. So right now I'm outside of the building envelope, so I can tell the software that. Uh, so the operator location, uh, with our lovely artwork here, uh, I'm gonna tell it that I'm outside. And then we can put our temperatures as well. So 
I can just say it's 70 degrees in, 75 out. Uh, if I want to collect wind speed, uh, I can put that in here as well. So now uh, for semi-auto, we'll go ahead and click begin. It's going to search for that gauge again uh, to find our equipment. Uh, so we can go ahead and start collecting data. So we can see it found my gauge uh, and it has the correct fan uh, that the gauge is operating uh, with the range that I had it set to. Um, and it also opens this window here uh, and I can choose to collect a baseline or uh, some building pressures with the fans running. First, I'm gonna do the baseline and then I wanna tell the fan speed to run at 0%. We're not gonna run the fans any power. We're just gonna log outdoor conditions. And before I do that, I wanna cover up that fan. So either use the shower cap cover or put all the range plugs in. Now that the fan is covered up, I can just tell it to run fans. And now I can go ahead and collect data. Okay. Back in that uh, settings menu, that's where I can change the amount of time uh, that a baseline is collected. The default is 20 seconds. Uh, that's what a lot of standards call for. Um, however, I can go in and change that if it's a windier day and I wanna collect longer baselines, then I can go into that settings menu uh, and change that. And now I can see uh, the data point is completed. I can see my baseline here on, in the baseline row under this first column. And I can take as many baselines as I want. Uh, but for the sake of time here, we're just gonna collect one. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of this zero in my window here, I'm going to change initial baseline to building pressurization. And then our first target, we'll just go ahead and collect uh, 60 pascals. And then I will uncover my fan. Now we can see on this window here that our target of 60 pascals has been attained. Uh, we want to look for that green border around there uh, in that message to let us know that it's okay to go ahead and start collecting data now. Um, so once we see that our target pressure has been attained, we can click collect data point. And then it will collect data at 60 pascals for 20 seconds. Again, if we ever want to change that, uh, we can uh, go into our settings and let it know how long we want it to collect, but 20 seconds is uh, the default and what's common in most tests. So now once it's finished, it'll say data point completed, and then we can just go down to uh, whatever pressure target that we want to test to next. So I can uh, delete that 60 and then input 50 if that's the next point I want to collect, and then we can say run fans to new target. And now we can hear that fan start to uh, decrease speed as it seeks 50 pascals. And then we're gonna look at this window. Uh, there we go, it turns green and says 50 has been attained. Now we can collect data. So we'll do that. And then it'll collect data for 20 seconds at 50 pascals. And we can see that information start to be collected here and the second row under building pressure. Now that that one's been completed, we'll do one more. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop it down to 40. Tell it to run fans there. And now we can see a pressure of 40 pascals has been attained. And so we'll go ahead and collect data. And now we'll see it populate here in our third column uh, as it uh, starts collecting data for 20 seconds. So uh, usually if I'm gonna do a multi-point test, we may take six to eight points, uh, maybe more, uh, depending on what standard that we're testing to. But for the sake of time, we'll just do three so I'll go ahead and stop fans, and I can X out of this window. Uh, and I'll go ahead and hit calculate. Uh, if I wanted to, I could do a post be uh, baseline, but for the sake of time today, uh, we're not gonna do that. If you're just doing a ResNet test, they don't require you to do that. However, if you're doing tests to other standards, then it does. So this depends on why you're doing the test and what your standards require, if you wanna do that final baseline or not. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and hit calculate and see what we get. And uh, now I can see uh, all of my results here. So airflow at 50 pascals was about 655 CFM. And then if I wanna look at the flow per envelope area at 50 pascals, I can see that here, the fourth row down, uh, and that's 0.10. Uh, 
CFM per square foot of envelope area. Uh, I can also see uh, air changes per hour. That's in here also. So uh, about two uh, is what we're seeing here uh, for this fictional building that we created here uh, where we're running here in our test lab. And so if I'm happy with all of this data, I can scroll down to results summary. And uh, that's where I can generate a report if I want to. So what it does is it puts all the information about the test uh, into a Word file. That way I can go in and I can include anything else about the test or that visit that I want to. So I can put in my company logo, uh, I can put in uh, some photos uh, that I took of the building, um, I can include any thermal images and any other notes that I want to include as well. So uh, here we can see uh, all of that information that we saw in our results are here. Uh, all the information about the building is here, the test method, the standard that we use. So, and then I can customize this to fit whatever needs that I have. So that's a quick rundown on Fantastic. We'll dive into a little bit more on it next week to do an automatic test. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you back here again next week.